So, the first thing I want to talk to you about is that there are three elements, there are three ingredients of effective communication. Now, I want you to pay attention because I'm going to ask you later what they are. How many ingredients are there of effective communication? Three. The first of them is content. What are you going to say? You should say something that is meaningful, purposeful. You should say something that is true. You should say something that is beneficial to somebody else. All of you, inshallah, all of you have friends, hopefully. And sometimes your friends talk a lot, but they don't say anything meaningful. Or you're on the phone with somebody for an hour, but they actually haven't said anything. There is something missing in the content. I, for example, spend a lot of time listening to uh, preachers of other religions on the radio in Texas. It's a hobby I have. And I try to listen very carefully for content, but after half an hour, I realize they actually haven't said anything yet. But the crowd loves it. So content is really important. Another example of content that I, I think is easy to understand is in the United States, you know, very recently we had an economic crisis. You know about that. And in the economic crisis, they had these corporate executives that were responsible for all kinds of unethical deals. And they were brought to Congress to testify. And they were asked very simple questions. Did you sign these documents? Now, when you ask a question like, did you sign these documents, the answer takes one second, less than one second. Either you say yes or you say no. But the guy starts by saying, you know, when I was a child, my favorite lollipop was red. And then, I, you know, and then he goes on for 45 minutes until the Congress session is over and they say, we'll have to come back tomorrow. So he's trying to give you useless content so he doesn't have to testify. Content is the first key to effective communication. The second key, the second key is style. It is not only what you say, it's how you say it. It's not just what you say, it's how you say it. I can testify to this myself. Every khutbah, every khutbah that's given has something good in it as far as content. There is probably an ayah of the Qur'an in the khutbah. There's probably a hadith of the Prophet wasallam in the khutbah. Isn't that true? Which means that there is nothing wrong with the content. But sometimes the khatib can be so boring. It's like he's releasing sleeping gas from his mouth when he's talking. People get some of the best sleep of their life in the khutbah. The only time they wake up is when he says, Aqim is salat. They're like, oh, okay. And then they get up and they pray. So sometimes the content is good, but the style is a problem. You have to have a style that gets people's attention. You have to have a style that keeps people awake. You know, so that's the second condition. And it's not just about public speaking, even inside your home. How many people here have teenage children? Teenage children, if you have them, raise your hand. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Okay, good. If you have teenage children and you tell them to come to the table for dinner, how many times you call Zubair? How many times you call Muhammad? One time? Zubair, come for dinner. Immediately, yes sir, and he's there? No. Zubair, come for dinner. Zubair, come for dinner. Zubair. <laughs> and you have to keep going. You have to do that. Because clearly talking to him once, or talking to him nicely to Zubair, sorry Zubair, but talking to Zubair nicely is not the style that works for him. You need some other style for Zubair. So Zubair, and then he's, you know, okay, okay, I'm coming, God, you know. Then he'll come, maybe. So that's the second. What was the first ingredient of effective communication? Content. Second, style, style. And before I move on, I should tell you a little bit more about style. Some of you, it'll save your marriage. There are different ways of saying things. You can, it's the same content. Maybe your wife made dinner. She put a lot of work into it. She was spending her day at work. She came home early. She cooked dinner for you, your, your favorite meal. She had it on the table before you even got there. And you're about to start eating. And you notice it's a little less salt than you're used to. You could use a little bit more salt. So what you want to say is, I want more salt. But there are different styles of saying that. <laughs> I mean, you could say, this is the most amazing dinner I have ever had. This is the food from Jannah. <laughs> if 
I had it some salt, it would be from the seventh level of Jannah. <laughs> Can I have some salt like this? That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is, woman, is the economy that bad? You couldn't put some more salt in this food? By the way, I hate your mother, etc. etc. You know. <laughs> There's, it, you're saying the same thing, the food needs salt, but there's different ways of saying it. Same style, same, same content, different what? Style. One style will make your life easy and the other style you'll sleep outside. Right? So <laughs> you got to be careful with your style. So there's content and there's style. And finally, lastly, and this is probably one of the most important ingredients, you have to know who you're talking to. You cannot talk to two different people the same way. The way I talk to my child is not the way I talk to my father. It's not the same, even if I tell them the same thing. Even if I say, I'm going to the masjid, come with me. Come with me. If I say, come with me to my father, it's not the same as when I say, come with me to my son. Is it the same? No. The content is the same. But depending on who I'm talking to, I change. The same is true of a classroom. Your teacher, or if you're a teacher, you don't talk to all the students the same way. There are some students that listen very caref very qu quickly, immediately. And you call them over and you tell them in their ear once and it's done. There are some students, you have to talk to them and there's another language that we use in the Muslim Ummah besides talking to communicate with students sometimes and then we use that to talk to them. Because there's different kinds of students. You have to know who you're talking to. So this, these three things, if you can master them, then you will have good communication. Now why am I putting all of this in my introduction? In these like three minutes that I have left or six minutes that I have left, I want to share with you why. The Quran, the book of Allah, the speech of Allah is perfect speech. It is the best communication in existence. Nobody communicates better than Allah. We communicate, but all of our communication was taught by Allah. Our teacher is Allah. Nobody speaks on this earth except that Allah taught them. So when He speaks, you cannot compete with it. There's no comparison. Now when Allah has perfect speech, what does that mean? That means He has the best content. Number one, He has the best content. What's number two? He has the best style and he's always considerate he's always very accurate about his audience every surah in the quran even sometimes passages in the quran have a very specific audience allah talks to one audience one way allah talks to another audience another way allah talks to jews one way allah talks to christians another way allah talks to mushrikun in the first year of the seerah one way and allah talks to the mushrikun in the tenth year of the seerah another way the audience is different the people who come to visit rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam allah gives ayat to tell them there's different ayat. Allah does not say to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I already revealed Tawheed to you, pick one of the surahs and tell them. No. He gives them a special ayah, special surah for them because they need a special message, you understand? So when we talk about Surah Ar-Rahman today, we have to understand something about its content. But if you really want to under understand its content, you have to understand its style. And if you want to understand its style, you first and foremost, before anything else, you have to understand its, fill in the blank, audience. Who was Allah talking to when Surah Ar-Rahman was revealed? Most accounts are that Surah Ar-Rahman is either early Madani and most, most are that it's actually late Makki. And from the style of the surah, it appears to be a Makki surah. It's a late Makki surah. Now what was happening in late Makkah? the mushrikun had become extremely stubborn. They did not want to hear the message of Islam. They said, we've been listening to this for 10 years. It's the same speech over and over again. Even Allah says, كَذَلِكَ نُصَرِّفُ الْآيَاتِ We keep changing the ayat. The message doesn't change. The ayat change. And they say, ah, we've heard everything already. Stop. We don't want to hear this anymore. We're not interested. And it's not enough that they're not interested, they start attacking the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَإِذَا عَلِمَ مِنْ آيَاتِنَا شَيْءً اتَّخَذَهَا هُزُوًا 
Every time he came to know something about the Qur'an, something about our ayat, he tried to make a joke out of it. So it's not only that they're not interested, now they make fun of the Qur'an, when the Qur'an is recited. لا تسمعوا لهذا القرآن وألغوا فيه لعلهم يرجعون Don't listen to this Qur'an. Make noise when the Qur'an is being recited. The believer is told, فَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنِ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْصِتُوا When Qur'an is recited, be quiet. Listen carefully. فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ Listen carefully. وَأَنْصِتُوا And stop talking and listen. أَنْصِتُوا in Arabic means two things. Number one, stop talking. And number two, listen. Both. وَأَنْصِتُوا You know? لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ so, And they said, uh, they said, don't listen to this Qur'an. Make a lot of noise. This is what they said. In other words, they became extremely Stubborn. Now I have two minutes left. I didn't finish my introduction, but I want to leave you with one point. When you, young guys, how many teenagers in the audience? Teenagers? Inna lillahi wa inna rajiun. Okay. Teenagers are playing football. Teenagers are playing basketball. Teenagers are hanging out and somebody bumps into you. Teenagers have very hot temper. What you do? <laughs> and they're ready to fight. And when they're about to fight, the friend holds you back. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. No, let me go. You know, and he doesn't want to, he wants to fight. So your friend who's holding you back says to you, calm down. He said, how do you say calm down in Malay? I didn't hear you, forget it. <laughs> It'll take me so long to learn that. Okay, so <laughs> calm down. Now, your friend says to you, calm down how many times? One time? When your friend says, calm down, you say, oh, I, I didn't realize that I should calm down. I should sit down and <laughs> sip on some tea now. Like, you don't do that. If because you're crazy at that time, he says, calm down, calm down. Hey, calm down. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me. Calm down. Relax. Relax. He says it ten times. And you are so angry at the time, maybe, maybe you heard it one time. Maybe. And then you listen. Because at that time, you are stubborn. When you are stubborn, you cannot be told something one time. You have to be told lots of times. The people of Mecca had become what? Stubborn. So Allah says, فَبِي أَيِّ أَلَىٰ إِرَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ فَبِي أَيِّ أَلَىٰ إِرَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ فَبِي أَيِّ أَلَىٰ إِرَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Maybe you will get it one time if it's said that many times. You understand? You that, that is the style of this surah. But the style is there for a reason. Because it's talking to a certain kind of audience doesn't that change your perspective on the surah so this is just the first part of my introduction this is the introduction to my introduction now it's time for the adhan inshallah ta'ala and right after the adhan i'll continue barakallahu li wa lakum alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in thumma ma ba'd so we were talking about surah al-baqarah and wait what were we talking about what were we talking about so far? What did we talk about so far? The four elements of communication. Three? Okay, what are they? Content? Style? So what kind of audience is Surah Al-Rahman originally? Stubborn people. Stubborn people. That's what I gave you so far, yeah? And now we know something about its style. Its style repeats itself, and that's very suitable for who? Stubborn people. Stubborn people need some, to hear something more than once for it to get inside their head. So there's this one message that is so important in this surah that Allah wants to instill into the people that are very stubborn, but they're just not getting it. So they have to hear it like many, many times. And what is that one message? فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ But more about that a little later. 